This bill includes um, several provisions that work together to help more Minnesotans get the affordable and reliable health care they need. We know that the current health care system is not working for everyone. Too many people are being left behind, unable to access or afford needed care for themselves and their loved ones. Through a mix of immediate and longer term solutions, this proposal lays out a comprehensive and thoughtful plan that supports the health and well being of all Minnesotans. The goals of this health care package include breaking down the barriers that prevent Minnesotans from accessing and keeping the coverage they are already eligible for. It also uh, will provide relief for working Minnesotans who are struggling with high out-of-pocket costs. It sets in motion transformational changes that address the high and growing costs of health care and provide Minnesotans with more choices for affordable coverage. Um, MHA opposes the provisions to create the Minnesota Care Public Option. The Minnesota Care Public op Option promises to be an affordable insurance option because it's based on paying low provider rates. This is because, on average, commercial insurers pay providers about twice the medical assistance rates. I just want to share with you all right now, 56% of our hospitals have negative operating margins. We are very worried um, that these continued low provider payment rates will not be sustainable for providers. I do want to point out that there are a lot of things we can do to help low income individuals. Uh, the Hospital Association would support raising the income eligibility for Minnesota Care. It has been set at 200% of the federal poverty guidelines since the program started. That could be raised to 300% or 400%. I am honored to share our strongest support for expanding Minnesota Care through a public option. Our members feel strongly about this issue because as small business owners, they often purchase health insurance on the individual market and face high costs there. Others uh, chase th insurance through a spouse's employment and still others make the incredibly dangerous decision to go without coverage altogether. I, I was new to the organization. I said, do any of our members have a story on this? Other folks said, uh, yeah, lots of them. Call Debbie in Goodyear County. Called her. She was literally carrying buckets across her icy farmyard, set them down, answered her cell phone, said, oh, you know, I don't know, Stu. I don't know if we have a perspective on that. We really don't know that much about health insurance. In fact, we don't buy it at all. We, we, we can't afford it. She was risking a generational uh, farm, w literally one slip away from a devastating financial event that would have cost her and her community um, that farm. As a guy that doesn't like growing government, uh, this, this definitely has a massive growth uh, going through creating new boards, creating new, new costs to trying to provide care to patients. Um, so that's my recommendation there, um, we are now doing an investigation for $1.2 million on uh, universal health care. Um, my concern there is that those individuals will be able to use whatever statistics we need to tell us what we want to hear. Um, and so, you know, we're going to be able to say, yes, universal health care is great because it will reduce the cost. But then you also don't get into the discussion of how many providers do we lose? How long is the patient wait going to be? Where are we going to be at? with uh, people coming from out of state to uh, be provided care. When you think about our healthcare system, we are such a study in contrast. There are ways in which we are outstanding, and there are ways in which we fall so far short. As Senator Utke, uh, sorry, as Senator Abler mentioned, we spend more, far more than anyone else in the world, and we have worse outcomes. So we're, not, we're doing something wrong, and so we need to look at different approaches, and your bill is doing that, and I'm really appreciative of that.